here we are at the Dorothy Clive Garden and I'm with Kathy Roby, the curator, one of our former students at Derby College and uh, we're going to be catching up with Kathy and finding out what she's been up to. Now I came here as a student way back when I was 19 with the head gardener of Powys Castle, uh, Jimmy Hancock, who uh, knew the head gardener here, George Lovett, and they were like uh, two sort of boys in it, you know, having a good laugh about their training and different things, and so it's got great memories from me. Um, and we've got also with us tonight our, our, some of our RHS group who have braved it out, and uh, they've come to have a look at the gardens. So without further ado, we're going to get stuck in and have a look at all the lovely plants and uh, this, this lovely little walkway up through which uh, we'll let Cathy tell us a little bit about that and the repetition of the plants and there's a couple of nice viburnums in the background, some nice viburnum placatum we'll have a look at. So it's just about staying dry so hopefully it'll be better than last year we got drenched. <laughs> <laughs> Two lovely Labradors, what are the names? Flora and Bess. Flora and Bess with us, and they're looking really good and healthy. And also looking healthy is a fantastic Davidia in Volia Crata. Uh, really good. Uh, so, so this is the best you, it's looked. It's the, it is. There was a year, a couple of three years ago, it looked a bit dire. Really. <laughs> and we weren't sure if it was going to survive. Um, but we have actually given it a bit more space. Right, yeah. healthy fantastic plant. This is after. Uh, Pierre David who discovered it in China and uh, Ernest Wilson of course who brought it back to the UK the dove tree or the ghost tree with those beautiful in, in volucra or brax if you like and uh, they look stunning and uh, I always uh, if you look inside you'll see the, the little ball in there which has got lots of male and there's one little female hand which sticks out which is always uh, quite interesting when you find it just to the side here we've got this the lovely Viburnum placatum. Do you know which one that is? Marius. Marius Mauricii, yeah, so beautiful after Charles Maurice, another Chinese plant hunter. So we spotted a really nice plant in this uh, border which repeats itself. So this is Amsonia what? Tabernata. Sonia Tabernata. Fantastic plant this is. Look at that lovely starry flower, isn't it? Yeah. Really good that is. Excellent. And there we got the which euphorbia is that one? Is that a palustrus? Just palustrus, though of the marsh palustrus. We are so magnolia, lily flora nigra. Nigra means oh, no one answered. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Recognise this plant here where it might be where you might have seen that before or something like it. It's quiet. <laughs> it's a, you know the ragged robin or uh, the Cellini or a pink. This is uh, uh, this is a Cellini. Um, fimbriata, isn't it? Albus fimbriata. And see these little little tiny thin strands, fimbria. Now, uh, if you're into your uh, female anatomy, you might know what that is. Where you find them on the fallopian tubes on the end of the catches the egg. Fimbria. That's where it gets its name. Maybe I might cut that in now. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just call it Fimbrial to an accept it. Keep it that way. Uh, so that's the uh, yeah beautiful little um, little patterns on the lovely little frilly bit. Nice plant and again repeated on the border. Fantastic. That's another one that spreads well here. <laughs> so this is a little dry scape area they've got at the Dorothy Clive Garden. And you can see this beautiful Libertias and they just cope with anything. Kathy was saying there's some lovely Artemisia, the Ludovicina type, um, there's a Ringium, a Garbifolium, and there's some Euphorbia, looks like Martini or something, one of those. Yeah. Um, and then some lovely, I don't know if it's Cordateria, and uh, there's loads of Geraniums, and uh, all looking good with a fair smuttering of Bluebell Endymion running through it. Um, Looks excellent, lovely Aeschylus in there as well. And uh, right at the back, a Chamisopyrus Lawsoniana whistleye, uh, with the, has the male flowers which are sort of orangey and then they fade. I've had about 2,000 sent up from Exbury. And the hillside garden just used to be a field, so they healed them all in there. Then he sold or gave, gave away most of them and kept 34 for here. Um, and then 
down at Bridgemere, they had a, a misting propagator, so the best 34 they kept and propagated down there. And the chap that did the propagation only named two, and he called one Dorothy Clyde and one the Colonel. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Neither of which we have. Oh, we do have the Dorothy Clyde, which is a fly. Um, so all around the garden, we've still got the originals, and they've just got numbers. Mm. But you Fantastic. can see where they've been propagated and put in groups. But we are going round, which is this year's project, is that we will cut them back and move some of them, but yeah. keep them with their numbers. Just for so we're coming to the really exciting bit where we go into a sandstone quarry uh, which Lord Clive, around about the 1940s, um, he built the garden for his wife who sadly was suffering from Parkinson's and uh, so she could walk around the garden. That's a pretty romantic thing to do, isn't it really? Quite impressive. Uh, so that's what Lord Clive did. Sadly she, she died in 1942 but we have this incredible sandstone quarry we're going to go into. It's got a beautiful canopy of oaks and various other uh, trees and beech and different things to give that dappled shade, which of course rhododendrons like. They're very shallow rooted, so without the dappled shade, they would <laughs> die. <laughs> that's a word. <laughs> they die. <laughs> so, uh, so that's where we're going now. So normally it's absolutely stunning. Kathy will already know, but it should be a nice surprise for us all. So here they are, explorers into the Dow. <laughs> wow. Clever bit, they've got this beautiful canopy of oaks just creating enough dappled shade so those rhododendrons can survive. And in the bottom here, we have good old Smyrnium perfoliatum, plenty of that. There's some milia fuse from there, I can see a little golden grass. There's Telema grandiflora king cup, there's Selenis, and there's even some Osmonda regardless, the beautiful uh, royal fern there, with plenty of symphitamine behind it as well. And this time of night, one of the biggest things in this garden is when the birds sing, it, it, it kind of, because it's a bowl, you get an incredible sound. And there you can see we've got Azalea mollis, the, sorry, Azalea lutea, I should say, the honeysuckle, Azalea looking good. Sandra and Cynthia, beautiful. So a plant here, Kathy, what have we got here? Yep, this is another of our rare and wonderful, the Trochodendron arachnoides. Fantastic. I can remember using that at Chelsea Flower Show on the embankment right. for uh, the plant hunter's garden um, and, uh, yeah. That was in um, my day. That was in your day, yeah. yeah. When you, you, you're back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd would approve of the Mechanopsis with the Smyrnium and a few ferns. The in this garden, which you don't think about a lot, is because it's in a bowl, it could be a frost pocket, but they have paths leading off and they're like, the paths act like drains and they actually drain the cold air off. And it's a really clever piece of landscaping to do that. It's round the corner. This is a bit where I can see some Smilacini, uh, many anthema, I think it's called now. There's some beautiful shuttlecock ferns, Machusa stuffy up terrace. Plenty of azalea lutea, and then we've got this incredible waterfall, and it looks stunning. Uh, there's a lovely pyrus to the left, a uh, lovely acer at the back, and this is really, really good. There's some reducers down there in the foreground as well. What a stunning picture that is. That's a real surprise view as you come around the corner. Nice camassias here uh, against the Smyrnium again. Looks really good. Forms here, lovely. Yeah, that looks good. That Quercus Roba fastigiata, planted by Colonel Clive's grandson. Did you yep. say? Yeah, wow. Fantastic. Wow. That's really good, especially against the rounded tops of the oak. That looks excellent. And the, and the rhodos as well, yeah. Nephorus, uh, the curve of the eye, just underneath the Quercus there. Fabulous. Rhododendron <laughs> Temple Bell, yeah, very nice. Yeah, Look yeah, at that, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Lovely sort of uh, new leaves as well as they unfurl. You know, really nice colour, almost like a little bit of copper in the green. 
So this is Crinodendrum hookerianum, named after Joseph Hooker, and it's the Chinese lantern bush. Uh, but they are a little bit tender, aren't they? It uh, is a bit tender. They can, yeah. can be a little but bit. And sheltered in here. Yeah, that's right. Because so. uh, yeah, I've seen, I've, I've seen a few throughout the garden in the past, and there was one that died out. Two this one's or two have died. And we've just planted another one. Excellent. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I know the one died out in my garden. I had it for a few years, yeah. but. They are beautiful, aren't they? Just, just stunning. Yeah. Really good. And normally it flowers just as the road needs to finish. Ah, so it carries it on a bit. It's a bit early this year. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Wow. And that, what's really good also is this the new growth, and, and a lot of roadies with the ingermentum on the underside. I remember when we did the garden at Chelsea in 2004, um, and I got a book, uh, a student brought me a book on, on, on rhododendrons. And it was how to identify them, and it got a picture with about 12 indumentums yeah. on the underside. I thought, oh my word, <laughs> trying to work out which one is which. Yeah. Really nice, though. Well, one of my projects at the moment is to catalogue the garden. Oh, right. So we've got two VMH people that come in, and George Lover. Is David Ballard just around? Yes. Oh, he's not. Um, so they come in and tell me, well, if you look at this and you look on the other side, and oh, my okay, word. just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's but, brilliant. But it's good. It is good. And yeah. we've got you know, a lot of expertise yeah, that come yeah. in and help. Yeah. So. yeah. Have you mapped it all very closely Apparently or GPS'd it? Was done. it? No, not yet. It was done. And George says there was a hardback book somewhere oh. where it's all drawn up and catalogued. Wow. And we can't find we it. Right. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> Somebody's got it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go into this incredible laburnum arch. And what's really good about this one, they've got the laburnum coming down, the alliums going up. You've got the Lanistra Bagasons gold to provide a little bit of all year round colour. And um, also in here, you did have the Graf Chimera um, laburnum satisus adami popping in every now and again. So sometimes you see an odd branch with a bit of sort of uh, broom-like foliage which is interesting and then just over to the left we've got a lovely uh, snake bark maple Acer tegmantosum and then I think I spotted a nice looks like a nice call witch in the background flowering a behind the azalea mollusk type we've got the lovely of course Acer grissium Paper bark maple, look at that beautiful bark peeling off there. Great winter colour, fabulous. Uh, beautiful Pinus wallachiana as well, just mm -hmm. part of the shelter belt round the side of the garden. The umbrella pine, Skyadopitus verticillata. Verticillate means it goes round in a circle. Um, so anything verticillate uh, has got that. Some, some flower and plants like the yellow archangel. Is verticillate, but uh, nice plant. Rhododendron, Hyder Gold. Look at that. The, uh, what's really nice is the the anthers on the stamen are brown stunning, against right? that. You know, it's fantastic. Oh. Ah. So this is an azalea toucan, uh, part of the bird series. I didn't even know there was a bird series. There's a rubrifolia. Cornus cows of China girl and the magnolia was sensation. Sensation. I've seen limonii, uh, which is slightly yellower, but sensation, beautiful. Honesty here, the lunaria, look at that, looks fab in the variegated form as well. Going right the way through, looks great. Magnolia Star I just have to Wars. I'm sure John Ravenscroft hadn't named before I told him how bad I thought it was. All right. This is a beautiful Acer. This is uh, Acer Palmatum Aconite Folium, and you can see the foliage is just like an aconite. Uh, you know, if you think of an aconite, a uh, special tree. This is one that Colonel Clive top worked, Fraxinus ola, and uh, he, he often uh, got the sort of experts of the day from the RHS out here. To, to just get, you know get advice and to find out what to do but he actually did the grafting which is so impressive Exodus Ola <laughs> the Jubilee <laughs> what are you doing in the gardens you said uh, well I'm 
Well, we've got a, a street party going on and celebrations with music and jollies. Um, and we've planted a Magnolia Elizabeth. Magnolia Elizabeth, fantastic. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Belvedere, uh, sort of an arts and crafty sort of building. Uh, they did have a lovely wisteria growing along it at one time, which looked good, but unfortunately started pulling the tiles off. The ash die back, look at that, brilliant. Looks really good, looks quite happy there. And just here's one of my favourite plants in the garden. It is this beautiful cornice, Eddie's white wonder look in the distance. And just here they've got this lovely sort of meandering path which looks great and it starts off they've got snowdrops, they have daffodils and then or species narcissi and then followed by the bluebells which is really good. Extending the season of the garden looks like there's a nice little sequoia tucked in there as well. So we've got the Eddie's White Wonder cornice, we've got this nice sort of, there's another cornice here uh, which looks like the ordinary controversial variegate, or is it alternifolia? No, it's controversial. It is controversial variegate. <laughs> that was controversial. Uh, and uh, then we've got this incredible clematis, which is scrambling up through the oak. Uh, looks really good. The beautiful uh, uh, false camellia, Stuartia pseudocamellia, one with a lovely smooth bark, has those lovely little white flowers uh, into the summer. And down there is a cutting that George Lovett took so brilliant. I have a little shimmy down through this hillside and with the beautiful pines and a lovely view as well out to Shropshire. And uh, lots of lovely alliums uh, in full flower here. I'll set the dogs on you if you make so we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've just about finished our, our tour here of the Dorothy Clive Garden, which looks absolutely stunning. It's still absolutely brilliant. And actually, I think uh, some of the work that's been done over the recent years has brought it back to its former glory because they lost a few trees in the big storms and it's looking really brilliant now. So why not pop along and visit it? Uh, we've had a great time. It's been great Thank catching you. up with Kathy and uh, I think all students here have enjoyed it. I think that's fair to that's say. Good. Can we uh, get a thumbs up or something? Let's pan <laughs> round there on that down. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much, Cathy. No,